We got some week 14 OFL action as two teams in the OAFC fighting for a wild card position, most likely the Houston Texans facing off against the Denver Broncos. Coach Jose Mills taking on head coach Zion Okonjo the fourth. Let's go first quarter, second and six as Demarcus Rice for rookie sensation will connect with Michael Thomas, the veteran receiver from the Ohio State University for the Bronco touchdown and they strike first with a 7-0 lead here in the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado. Now here's the Houston offense. Big Ben might have had a little bit of too many pregame cheeseburgers as he's brought down by the safety Lucas Dennis, the former Boston College Eagle. That will bring you up a third and nine. Texans having a nice little drive now at the 21-yard line, third down and four for Houston as it would be a screen pass for Giovanni Bernard, and he has stopped a yard short of the first down marker that will likely force a field goal attempt and a field goal make for it. Giorgio Tavecchio, and the score is now 7-3. to three. Denver still with the lead as Demarcus Rice on first down. Screen pass for Brandon Cooks, and the Texan defense is cooking after that one, getting the stop for a loss of two. Now third and ten, Rice up to the corner. Nice player right there for the rookie, Patrick Zich. And Broncos still driving. 150 or 155, 755 left in the second quarter. I'm blind as Demarcus Rice on second and 10 would be picked off. The play is made by the Houston Texans. DeAndre Baker, the former Georgia Bulldog, makes the play his third INT on the year. Now first down here for the Bron for the Texans, sorry, as Roethlisberger going deep to the 33-yard line. Nice play right there for Eric Ebutt. Oh, I'm sorry, Ebron for all my uh, Eric Ebron fans. I know all two of you are offended. Anyway, now at the 22-yard line here, Big Ben Roethlisberger. He's going to roll out, and he's going to go out. Brought down by Justin Houston and another defender. Houston's 100th sack of his NFL slash OFL career, both of those combined. So I don't know if it's really too official as Tavecchio's field goal actually would be short. So the Texans are still scoreless on that drive. Still 7-3 as Demarcus Rice screen pass and a nasty hit. On Zach Watson, the rookie running back out of Florida. As once again, DeAndre Baker making the play. Now at the 46. Houston has the ball as Roethlisberger sacked again. This time by the former Detroit Lion, Anthony Zettel. Bringing up a second and 21 as Roethlisberger, the former Pittsburgh Steeler. He's going to show off the legs and he loses the juice. And it would be recovered by Justin Houston. And the Denver Broncos would get the football back. Huge turnover, and that could lead to some more points here for the Broncos as that one would be a nice pass for the rookie Patrick Zich up the middle, bringing it to the 27. Did I say up the middle? I, sh I, I, I meant to the side. And then Jermaine Wells, the man, the myth, the legend, would make the field goal. Jermaine Wells, by the way, is the only person to ever survive Ligma. Anyway, first down here. Roethlisberger brought down again as the Denver pass rush is eating right now. Third and 14, an incredible catch by Willie Sneed, the former Saint and Raven. Now at the 47-yard line, handoff for Giovanni Bernard. Woo! Nice little juke move as Bernard brought down on around the 24-yard line. Very nice run right there for the former Tar Heel and Bengal. Now at the 12, Big Ben Roethlisberger, the thick boy. Over to the end zone, and he will connect with Eric E. Butt. Oh, I mean, E. Braun once again for the Texan touchdown, and we are now tied up at 10 apiece. Showing off the whip and the Millie Rock, now 10 apiece. Now at the one yard line is where the Texans are backed up. No worries, this very able to gain 19, getting out of safety zone. Roethlisberger, 4 for 16. That play didn't really lead to anything, though. Next, Bronco possession. Rice would fumble it. Timmy Jernigan with the sack. Denver does get it back, second and 22 now for the Broncos as nice short pass for a gain of seven. I don't know why that was in there. That play isn't really important. Third and 15, Demarcus Rice. You might as well call him Kim John Yoon because he's launching nukes. His pass is incomplete, but we have a flag on the play, and it would be none other than pass interference. Good old pass interference on the safety, Andrew Sandejo. 
Huge conversion right there for the Denver Broncos. Now second and 11 from the 12. Rice in the back of the end zone for Brandon Cooks, who gets the touchdown. Now this play would actually be reviewed as take another look in just one second. And it's really close. You can definitely tell he got the one in, but the other one... It's sort of hard to tell with the camera angle whether he got the second foot in or not. The play would stand, so it's now 17-10. to 10. Madden and NCAA never reverse their reviews. Anyway, second and 10, as that ball, after being tipped about 17 times, will be caught by Snead, who is decked to the ground. But still, holy cow, what a gain by Snead. Now second and 9, Roethlisberger with a nice pass and a first down, but a little bit more. Penalty flag after the Texans had a costly flag. This time it'll be on the Broncos. Face mask on that one. It's on Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, the former Florida Gator. Texans couldn't really do anything despite the penalty. As Here's G Georgie Tavecchio for the field goal. It is good, and now it's a one-point game. Even though it was 4th and 18, I don't know if that's the call I would have made personally, but maybe that's why I'm not a head coach in the OFL. Wink, wink. First down as Demarcus Rice will be picked off. Huge turnover for the Texans. That's the cornerback, Mike Hilton, with the play. And the Texans have a shot to win this game. 2.19 left to go. Can they do it? Third and one. Head off for Bernard, and he has stopped short. He loses a yard. And that'll lead to a fourth and one. Texans need to get it. This play right here is essentially the game. Texans need a conversion, as this can be a handoff for Bernard, who gets the first down. But wait, penalty flag on the play. This could be a killer for the Texans. And sure enough, it is a holding on guess who? None other than Eric E. But himself. I forgot to show it, but it was on Ebron. So, 4th and 11. Texans need another conversion. And Willie Sneed drops the ball as Ronald Darby is for one with the deflection. And now Denver just needs to chew the clock. 3rd and 4. This play is the game. Handoff for Watson. And he gets the first down. And that'll do it. As the Denver Broncos win a huge game. 17-13. Huge playoff implications could be on the line here, especially the loss for the Texans as Denver has a chance at their division. Meanwhile, the Houston Texans, they just need to win for a wild card spot with Jacksonville pretty much having that division secured. As here's a look at the box score, very good game till the end. Definitely happy that we saw this one, even though we could have seen the Steelers and Jaguars who are two of the best teams in the league. I'm cool with this game, two teams that we don't get to see every day and a very close down of a wire game. So Ravens and Colts, two teams that are certainly still alive in the playoff hunt. Ravens get the win. Two of these teams were some of the worst in the OFL last year, and this year they're definitely playing better ball, especially Baltimore, who I think probably is a game or two ahead of Indianapolis now after this win. I will show standings at the end of the video. I don't remember what these two records are off the top of my head. One of the bigger upsets of the week, Vikings beat the Packers in overtime. Packers were the number one seed in the conference, but with this loss, they have fallen to number three. And meanwhile, for Minnesota, they're not really in the playoff hunt, but I guess good for them. Getting a win. Pride, I guess, is cool. I don't know. Speaking of pride, he used to be the coach of the Vikings. That, that, that pun was not on purpose. Dolphins get back to their winning ways after a two-game losing streak on last week's stream. As they beat the Chiefs by one, Kansas City sort of in free fall ever since their big win against the coach, the team that I'm coaching, of course, the New Orleans Saints. Dolphins now 9-4 and four, as they are certainly in contention for a playoff spot and they're in contention to win the whole thing. I don't think they quite have the talent to do it, but there's certainly a chance. Two cellar dwellers in the LFL, Chargers taking on the Bengals and the Los Angeles Chargers get the win. I've got to assume both of these teams are already eliminated, but if not, then they're awfully close to being eliminated. Don't expect to see either of these teams contending for playoff spots. But once again, playing for pride. Two teams that are contending, the Falcons and Bucks, both a little bit away from the playoffs. And Atlanta gets a huge win here, putting them a game ahead of the Bucks. Falcons now 7-6, Bucks at 6-7. and seven, As AP and the Falcons absolutely needed a win. It seems like the Saints have the division locked up with a win or a Falcons loss. 
So, the Falcons definitely need to play better football if they want to get a wild card spot. And speaking of wild card spots, I definitely expect the Detroit Lions to have one with another victory, this time over the Chicago Bears, which is sort of the guaranteed win. The Bears are the worst team in the OFL. Sorry, Walt, it's just true. 2-11. While the Lions are right around that 8 or 9 win mark. So I do expect them to be the 5 seed in the conference with the Packers a little bit ahead of them. Steelers and Jaguars. I believe this game was very close. And the Jaguars got the win. As these two teams very well could play in the OAFC Championship. These are definitely the two best teams in the conference right now. I would say with the Dolphins sliding. So wouldn't be shocked to see these two teams get the top two seeds. Wouldn't be shocked to see them in the conference championship. Jets taking on the Titans. Titans are sort of in it, not looking great for them right now, but they still have a chance while the Jets, they're not in a good position really, but they do get the win, playing for pride as the Titans I believe fall to 6-7, and seven, and they're going to need a lot if they want to make the playoffs, this is a huge loss for them, Giants defeat the Cardinals, Arizona is pretty much out of the playoffs, and the Giants right now are looking good for a wild card spot, probably the 5 or the 6 seed depending on what happens with Detroit. Once again, maybe a team like Atlanta swoops in, but right now the Giants are looking good for a wild card spot as Nylon and the, Fal the Giants have done a very good job since those two have joined forces. Bills with the win over the Patriots. New England is another team that's pretty much done. I think they are officially eliminated now after this loss. And Buffalo, they've been a little bit shaky at times, but they are now a little bit ahead of the Dolphins. I think they currently have a head-to-head -head tiebreaker over the Dolphins in the division. Uh, the Red Hot Raiders beat the Panthers. It was an ugly start for Oakland, but they've been playing some really good ball the past couple weeks. Carolina is now 6-6-1. Six, six and one. Not looking great for them, but if they went out, I definitely could see them grabbing a wild card spot. And Oakland as well, I could see them making it too. They have been excellent the past few weeks. The Rams beat the Cowboys. Cowboys had a really hot stretch, and now they're sort of in a cold stretch. So it seems like this Cowboys team is really streaky, and they're going to need to get streaky if they want a wild card spot. I was talking about how the Giants were a wild card, but no one's ahead of them in their division. I'm smart. Speaking of the Rams, they are 10-3, and three, one of two 10-win teams in the league, and the other one happens to be the New Orleans Saints as they grab win number 10. Saints and Rams pretty much have their divisions guaranteed, especially the Saints. Maybe Seattle or San Francisco proves the Rams trouble, but these two teams are now the top two seeds in the conference with the Packers losing, so maybe we get a rematch of last year's o ONFC Conference Championship. Browns and Redskins, I'm pretty sure the Browns probably won this game. Uh, I totally forget, and this Gordon show, unfortunately. So the Redskins, extremely talented team, but they just haven't figured it out. I think they have three or four wins. Browns, probably not going to win the division this year, but I do expect them to get a wild card spot. And then Seahawks taking on the Niners. I want to say San Francisco won this game. Both Dwayne Haskins and Deshaun Watson struggled. Once again, I don't know why these scores aren't showing. Maybe I did something wrong. But San Francisco does get the win in a pretty important game. Both of these two teams are sort of on the outside looking in for a playoff spot. But both of these teams do definitely have a shot, especially Seattle and is to San Francisco after their big win. So here's a look at the Week 15 schedule. There's a very solid slate of games. We're playing the Raiders, which kind of scares me considering how good they've been playing. And then looking at the conferences, Jacksonville leads the OAFC. They are the only team in the league who has clinched a playoff spot. And not just that, they have clinched their division. And it's not like they're in a terrible division. All three of those teams, the Texans, Colts, and Titans, are fighting for playoff spots. I don't expect any of those three teams to make it, but... They're not laughing stuck. So that'll end the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like the button and subscribe. And as always, have a good one.